Hi, I'm Ray Salisbury, a photography tutor from Nelson. I'm going to show you some killer techniques so you can shoot people. Now it's time to introduce to you the lovely Latino model, Pri Satna. In any artistic field, it's a good idea to have a clear vision of what you want to achieve. This usually will involve a bit of research, which will hopefully inspire you into action. A good practice is called storyboarding. Don't worry if you're not very competent at drawing. No one needs to see these sketches. Drawing is merely a method to clarify and record your thoughts, especially compositional ideas. Two, location. Your choice of location will depend on a variety of factors, including the current weather conditions. Gusty winds can play havoc with clothing and hair. It's a good idea to scout around for a suitable location. It's surprising what you'll find even in the heart of a city. Botanical gardens or public parks provide pretty backdrops while derelict alleys and grungy walls can introduce a modern chick flavour to your shot. 3. Camera settings. Hand holding your camera allows for flexibility and speed, but this means you must avoid camera shake. So, select a shutter speed fast enough to counter this. Use aperture priority. It's the most effective way to isolate the subject from the background using a narrow depth of field. You'll want to use a wide aperture, something like f4 to f1.8 will blur the background nicely. Four lenses. The best focal length for portraiture is 85 millimeters. It compresses the perspective of facial features, which look more flattering. That's about 50 millimeters on a crop sensor DSLR. The majority of your portraits, you will want to isolate the subject from the background, achieving a very shallow depth of field. If the background elements aren't blurry enough, move your model away from them, or zoom in closer. And by zooming in closer, you can fill the frame with tight head and shoulder shots. Five, communication. When photographing strangers, there are a few unwritten rules to follow. Etiquette for good photographers. Number one, start shooting further away, capturing full body shots with a telephoto lens while the session is warming up and the model is getting used to you. Once the ice is broken, you can close in and get close up headshots. Number two, look for signs of fatigue and don't push your subject too far or it will show in the final images. Remember, you're not shooting landscapes or flowers. You're dealing with real live people, so you need to build a good rapport with your subject. Number three, talk to them. Show them their images on the LCD screen. This will keep them motivated and help them understand how the shoot is progressing. Number four, perhaps the most important rule is never touch the model. Huh. Rather, physically demonstrate the pose you wish them to adopt. Six, posing. With a novice model, they may appear rather awkward, especially when standing straight on to the camera. So turn them around at a 45 degree angle, but with their head facing the camera. Rather than look flat footed, get them to put their weight on one foot. Hands can also be distracting, so ask your subject to play with their hair, glasses, or put their hands on their hips or in their pockets. Sometimes your subject can tire, and forced smiles aren't as believable. Here is a common technique professionals use to generate a natural smile from their talent. Ask their subject to turn their head away. On the count of three, they swing their head back towards the camera while you click the shutter. This way, their facial expression will be fresh. If your subject is seated at a table, they could rest their head on a folded hand. But there's a right and wrong way to do this. Seven, eyes. 
It is usual for a subject to be looking into the camera lens as this direct gaze is powerful. The eyes are the windows of the soul. So it's crucial that your subject's eyes are in sharp focus. Eye direction is also an important consideration. When shooting environmental portraits, don't have the model looking out of the frame or the viewer's eye will wander away. Rather, have the model look towards the negative space inside the picture frame. Lastly, the pupils of the human eye have tiny catch lights, those tiny white reflections that sparkle with life. Without catch lights, the person looks a little lifeless. To create these when in the shade, you will need a strong lighting source such as a reflector or a fill-in flash. Number eight, lighting. Traditional wisdom suggests that bright sunlight is best for photography, but this is not the case for portraiture. The harsh midday sun can produce a sundial effect under the nose and um, deep shadows under the chin. So forget the back to the sun mantra and shoot contre jour into the light. This can be more challenging as the person may look silhouetted and flare can be a problem. So use a lens hood. Right. Ironically, an overcast sky is the very best light for outdoor portraits. The huge bank of white clouds overhead act as a giant diffuser. Perfect. Nine, composition. You really do need to introduce some dynamism and energy to your compositions. But here's a few no-nos. Don't cut the person off at the knees or the neck. This is a digital form of decapitation and looks bad. Crop at the breast, the hip or thigh. Also, try not to crop off their hands or feet at the edges of your photo. And when looking up at your model, they will appear more dominant. Be careful to avoid the dreaded double chin. And when viewed from a high angle, the subject will appear vulnerable. Not really what you want. You really need to position yourself level with the subject's eyeline. An interesting technique is to tilt your camera at an angle of about 15 to 20 degrees. This will add a dynamism to the composition. Tip 10. If you're shooting from the hip like a street photographer, remember your rights and responsibilities. When in public, everyone is fair game, but you can't use the intellectual property of others, like the likeness of their face, for financial gain without their express permission. So, if your intention is to sell a photograph, Carry a bunch of model releases in your kit bag. Ask your subject to sign one at the beginning, or else you may forget. In summary, by following these guidelines, your portraiture will improve. We all make mistakes, just learn from them and keep on going. For more details on composition and camera settings, download my full ebook. You can click here on the right side of your screen. And if you found this video inspiring, please subscribe. Well, it's time to get out of here. Let's go.